When we touch down, but I broke down. Gamtel G Fiber, now you can enjoy super fast internet in gigabytes. G Fiber is affordable, stable, secured, and accessible to homes, businesses, and enterprises. With Gamtel G Fiber, the future is speed. Gamtel, creating a brighter future in communication. him that the last time he sent the money it was not enough to buy all the provisions oh sorry i forgot to tell him are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions yes, yes. But don't you know about baluo baluo what is baluo baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop and you don't have to worry about the exchange rate. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel, Yaibarom.
I get it. On 3259220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. Okay, I'm Okay, I'm going to get it. 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 I'm going to 56 branches more of the Gambia. Huh? Ha. Gambia Kono and in Gambia Bantala Banko. Unka Kono Kia Beret. Kodo Sifa Sifa for Falindu of Fanya de la Tamemena Kodi Topoton in Kodi Maro. Janum number one in Yonta. And Nun for another another enterprise is Sotali. Bolo Golam Nintuko, Domoral Fanan Kol Fanan Bay Fira de la Dadi Man and Domoral Fanan Betiat. Gambia Dauda Yalom of Fa Kendol Sotali. Ha, eh, one more hat. Ha, apparent. You are Kazima left and Yell and Kendol every night. Yale Bukani of Wall, Abarka. Ha, Yalan del Chosano. Abarka. Welcome to the brunch on Kerfato. I'm Lamin Cham welcoming you once again to our weekly current affairs show. Today I'm with Nima. Nima is back. Nima, of course, I told you she lost her dad uh, a couple of weeks ago now, but we're happy that she's back here. Nima, we're sorry about your loss and uh, the fans have been really expressing condolence since, since then. Welcome back. Thank you. Now, in this program, we will bring you COVID updates, of course, the Gambian situation as far as COVID-19 is concerned. We will also take a look at uh, some of the major stories uh, in the news this week. And we will go back to Election House, as we promised last week, to check on the Electoral Commission as to how uh, their preparations are or what are the programs that have been made to uh, that we are suspended because of COVID-19 pandemic. So, Joe Colley is the Director of Communications and Training at the IEC. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ah, uh, okay. Welcome. Nima, 
Um, when you were away, so many things happened, but since you were away and uh, you were brief, uh, let me come to the nearest point. We have the latest report, which says COVID-19 situation in the Gambia. We have only one active case. We have 10 in number, mm -hmm. one died, and uh, all the rest now, I could say basically, I've, 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 been, I've been released except one. One died, eight have been. Oh, I've been treated, and now it's only one. Um, Nima, mm -hmm. that's 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 a pleasant news, isn't it? It is, uh, especially given the fact that we are hearing reports, we are, we are hearing predictions, especially by Bill Gates and his wife, and uh, other conspiracies that, uh, maybe it's not the right thing to call him, but. Uh, that Af cases in Africa could rise up above 100,000. Uh, so that has been scary for everyone. And we are seeing our neighboring countries, Senegal, Ghana, having incre uh, increments in terms of their confirmed cases. So if Gambia is not registering any new cases, also given the fact that I don't think people are taking this matter as seriously as we used to, <laughs> say, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Uh, um, so if we are hearing reports that more people have recovered and we have only one active case, that is a very welcome news. But again, I think it's important to uh, exercise some level of skepticism, mm -hmm. uh, to not be so excited to uh, ask you to go back to normal, say, for example. I'm tempted to ask, uh, what explains this low number of COVID cases in the Gambia? Is it our lack of testing? Or um, the measures that have been put in place uh, have been successful? Because mm -hmm. if you look at it, okay, I mean, you can argue, okay, we the schools are closed, markets have been reduced to half a day, uh, but then if you go to the fish landing sites, etc., etc., you, 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 you see, I mean, huge crowds. So, what would you say? Is it just because the measures aren't working, or we certainly were not that much exposed to the virus as Senegal or other, other countries around the region are? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Um, yeah, I think a number of factors could be attributed to this. Uh, first of all, I, th I think we need to commend the ministry for mm -hmm. uh, taking a very bold step and handling this very accurately and very well also. But I think uh, one of the factors I would suggest or I would think could be attributed to this is our lack of contact mm -hmm. with uh, the epicenters compared mm -hmm. to other countries. Okay. Not much travel is coming to Gambia as say, for example, to Ghana or to Nigeria. Mm -hmm or to uh, Senegal that is very close to us. So we might have responded very quickly before we could have more people traveling from China, from Italy, where it, it has been but very most much people aggravated. Even, most people observe even but that was late. It was late. Our, our but in shutting of borders between us. Senegal had case, one case three weeks or so before we closed our borders. Yeah, I'm speaking in terms of comparison. Okay. It was late. We could have responded way earlier. I think we raised uh, uh, an alarm on this platform here that the government should have reacted very closely Mostly, because yeah. our case, our first case, was an important one. Yeah. We could have prevented that. But not from Senegal. It was from directly from England. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. so my point in comparison, if you're speaking in terms of comparisons, I think that could be a factor. Okay. But another factor, like I would say, uh, could be uh, that the ministry had really handled this. And mm -hmm. I think initially the civil society had mm -hmm. also taken a very uh, important steps in sensitizing people. people. Uh, and people have also responded very quickly to uh, preventing themselves. Yeah. But testing could also be another thing. We don't know for sure how many people could be invect infected and out there and are recovering on their own because yeah. it's also possible that you have COVID-19 and you are not showing symptoms and you mm. might be transferring this disease to other people ah. that we could not be aware of. Hopefully that is not the case, but that is also a possibility. possibility. Yeah. Your colleague, you, of you often said election is everybody's business, but COVID is everybody's business now. So I want to take you on your you know your views and comments and observations about our country situation only one active case and if we don't have any further cases uh, after a week or two i think two weeks if this one is also recovered we will be declared covid free that would be quite a piece of news um any optimism uh, any optimism on your side that this is possible well yes uh, i'm very optimistic because um the news is very impressive and uh, you must come and you know, the government of the day, mm -hmm. and almost everybody in the Ghana, because like, um, I was jokingly saying that like, um, when COVID came, everybody became, you know, 
everybody a lover of your neighbor neighbor okay. yeah because here now you're not just looking at you know the person near you yeah. you're just looking at everybody as everybody your neighbor else, yes. so people who have become very very much uh, much more generous mm -hmm. in terms of um, getting um, sensitizing people and of course um, of course I mean giving people the daily bread and things like that so which I think um, uh, is, is very very much laudable yeah. Now, you are a Christian. There are issues surrounding religion. Like, for example, even as we speak, being Ramadan, um, congregational prayers, nafili, locally called, are still not allowed. Your churches are still shut down. Yes, except, would, for, uh, yeah, except for a few things. Yes, or, or uh, yeah, because uh, usually, um, thanks to technology, mm -hmm. um, I know it is, it is difficult, you know, like for us, uh, Catholic, or Christians, let me just say Catholic Christians, yes. you know, uh, Easter is 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 on, uh, at the center of our faith. Yes, yes you yes, know, yes. without the resurrection of Christ, yeah. I don't think there would have been any Christian. How was it celebrated? Yeah, because what Gambia? happened, you know, like in the midst of Lent, you know, like we were not going for stations of the cross, no mass. We were following it, you know, on, on online, Lent. you know, online. Um, like from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, which is you know the Holy Week. Yeah. So we couldn't go to church, you know. We had to follow, you know, these things, you know, from from our houses, from from our homes, and uh, it's it's really difficult. Even like the Pope had to celebrate, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, the Pope. So so I know all these things is because of you know like health, you know. For uh, if you are not healthy, you cannot go to you church. You cannot go to church. Yes. Yeah. So we have taken all these things in good faith, and then we. Uh, we continued praying and uh, during the Easter season. Okay, we are already uh, during the Lenten season. Now we are in the Easter season, which goes 50 days, you know, up to Pentecost. So we are still praying, and we 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 joining our uh, Muslim brothers and sisters uh, who who started uh, Ramadan, and uh, we hope and pray that I mean this uh, with all the prayers and the efforts and. Yeah. Um, the adherence to, to, to social distancing and all mm. those things. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that um, this uh, COVID-19 will... COVID there were a few, one or two imams really made it public their disagreement uh, at the close of mosque. Has there been any stubborn uh, Christian cleric or bishop <laughs> or priest who... Yeah, I've not had anything because like, um, I know like we have uh, the Christian council and then you have like the uh, bishop Udiko is the, is the yeah. chairman. Yeah. Like he give, I mean, uh, directives, you know, and all those things. Mm -hmm. And of course, our own bishop also. In fact, our own bishop started, you know, because we had a, a gathering, you know, we had a reconciliation oh, okay. first first week of of Lent yeah. in Kungujang, and he came and up with mm -hmm. uh, with certain measures. Measures. Yeah, like even no sign of peace, in mm -hmm. the, you know. So we started actually, actually very yeah. early, you know, yeah. very early because we started observing these things in the chairman. Mm -hmm. And then when the, the government announced there and then we all announced and said that because you can pray in your home. I mean, I think I said, look, with the Muslims, you know, it's even better. You, you, you know, you don't need an imam to lead you. You can pray. Or you can pray. <laughs> but we need, you know, if you, if you want to go to mass. No, but you can also as a Christian. You no, can we need a priest, you know, to, you to, to say mass for us. You know, we do pray. Yes. But, you know, like for your own. You can Five pray on your prayers. But you Christian, you can pray on your own. Even yeah, if yeah, we no pray on our own. But if you want, if you want to have mass mm. and have communion, you, it has to be uh, an mass, mass is almost similar to Juma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Juma yeah, prayers. Yeah, so things like that. Yeah. So yeah. at least for me, I mean, mm -hmm. I think like these are unusual, yeah. or, or unusual times. times, abnormal times. So I think if, if for my own good, you know, I'm asked not to, you yeah. know. You know, this is just for some time. Yeah, so what do you? It's not for an eternity. It's just for some time. We just need to adjust. Mm -hmm. You know, we just need to adjust. We you know, like people are, you know, like very much, you know, sentimental when it comes to religion. Yeah, religion and all things. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, I'm just enjoying everybody. We just just um, exercise exactly. patience and tolerance and all those things because, like, it's just it's uh, for me. I think it's for our own good mm -hmm. because we know where congregational prayers, be it in the church or in the mosque, mm -hmm. you know. People people get people close, yes. very because close. I could imagine the other day when, when Bishop asked for us not to shake hands. Ah. And you know, like people say, look, I cannot like, it's, mo it's, it's unusual for me to go past people yeah. where they are sitting and then I just greet them and I go, <laughs> and because go. we are used to, you know, shaking oh, yes, hands, you know, hands, hands. By shaking hands. But you know, we adapted to it and things like that. So I am sure we can, 
uh, we, we, we can we can conquer uh, the news is is fine mm -hmm. Uh, but yet still we we keep on praying uh, keep on praying and then, you and then observing you know all the rules and regulations you know okay nima and joe um in some places in europe where we had worst cases they're thinking of relaxing the lockdowns although they have always been advised that probably it's a little bit premature would you like on the 15th of april or may or so when this 45 minutes elapses do you anticipate or would you even have like government to ex 10 day margin is done 45 days. Um, so the lockdown is not favorable for any country, small or big, um, because it affects people's daily activities, but also it has a huge impact on the economy. Mm -hmm. So everybody's looking forward to how do we recover after this. So I don't think any country would want to extend. Mm -hmm. Again, there are fears, there are concerns that we must address. Mm -hmm. What exactly does this mean for us? Without like a mass testing done, we cannot be certain that we are exactly COVID-19 free. So what I would suggest is the money is already there. The government hasn't told us what they are going to do with all the donations that are coming, all the grants that I are being that, yeah. coming. But I think this is one opportunity where Gambia is a very small uh, population, so we have that advantage to buy more testing kits and testing tools if they can, and do a nationwide testing. And if that is confirmed that there is no case, exactly, we don't need to, we can continue to close the borders, but at least, uh, activities within the state can continue. Yo, mm -hmm. would you envisage school story open by mid-May? Yeah, just not likely. Going by uh, what uh, Nima has said, uh, alluded to, I think mm -hmm. we cannot just open open up because yeah. for the sake of <laughs> for the sake of that. Yeah. So we just really. I no, mean, I'm just really, saying yeah. this because in the light of this mm. new good news, I say we have only a single case of. Mm covid you will hear voices who are very much in fact from the beginning opposed to this you know measures would say oh now you know, no need we have to you know but the government will again, again argue that let's not be complacent let's yeah let's, let's just be complacent yeah. we, we we listen to the experts you know and, and i'm sure well, when the time arrives, you know, they will take the right decision. But we have to be yeah. very proactive yeah, about this. Yeah, we cannot yeah. just also sit and say, oh, let's not be complacent, so let's not do something Yeah, yeah about we have it. to, yeah. yeah but yeah. 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 More How do you see social distance in the Gambia? Do you think there is 100% respect for it or only 50 or 45 or how much? How yeah, much? To some extent. Sometimes if you go to, if you go to town, I mean... Uh, it's scaring, you know. It's scary. It's scary you know. I've been to Tanya. Yeah, it, uh, it, it's scaring. But uh, nonetheless, you know, like uh, some people are really, really, really um, observing it. Because, like, I just take an example. Okay, we do have meetings, but not regularly. But most of the time, we, um, with the advent of technology, you know, mm. like um, you can arrange, you know, meetings, you know, using Zoom and all that. Mm. Yeah. So these are issues that you know, in terms like, of like, like for instance, most of the time I work remotely from from home. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I w I do go to the office, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then we've also tried to scale down like uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the knowledge as most staff, offices do. Yeah. So that at least you know, like because like they use public transport. Yeah, yeah. That's so if you send people on leave, because like the anticipation, like for us, uh, the ISA is like if almost everybody goes on leave now. Yes. So once activities resume, yeah, it would be it would really. You will have a full heart. <laughs> oh, you have a full heart. Yes. So it will be like sleeping yeah, giants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we will wake have a full up and heart. come. So, so those are some of the things. That For me, I think the measures that really are in place. I two. I I observe two unworkable measures. That is, uh, markets, and that includes fish markets, fish landing sites and transport system. I still have not seen a single taxi driver who have complied with half, half, uh, I mean, half capacity. I am yet to see it. And then I was in Tanje uh, not long ago. I, you know, I, I stepped on, on top of a canoe and I was watching people, you know, below me. I mean, it's like a beehive, beehive. Activity is just as it used to be. And I mean, I mean, I think this has to do with the new maze. They said the beach should close at two o'clock. So you see, they say they think that that will prevent people from gathering there from morning up to evening. But yes, yes. what happened actually is everybody knew now that um, beach closes at two, so that everybody came in the morning. So the crowd that you don't want is still there, even bigger in the mornings. For me, I think they have not done a good job in that. Is it that's that's something we nothing can be done about, or what? How do you decongest the fish landing sites? Sometimes it's uh, like 
the people themselves you know like you don't need you know like that's what i you know like things that ought to be done you know you don't need an authority or you don't need someone sometimes to be Chasing you, you know, to be doing. This is your own. You, you, you. Good. Your That's the problem. Safety. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Problem ignorance. Because if you are gone, you are gone. Yeah. You are the only one who is. Who, But who can is the government now make example. it compulsory to enforce mask? Like you don't only have to announce that mask said, but the police are there, immigration is there, mm. SIA is there. They can get there and said everybody must be seen with a mask. That can be done. Uh, compulsory you know, uh, that's that's possible they, yeah, they can you, enforce if that if you enforce something then there has to be i mean an avenue where you can get those things yeah. now they have As money we, we are going to discuss about the money they have millions now <laughs> 500 million i mean tiny i mean i mean any given time you bring 10 1000 1000 2000 masks yeah. come on anybody think, who comes you give them compulsory masks, that's there's, possible there's a fundamental problem here that need to be addressed on its own sensitization has happened mm -hmm. but more sensitization also happened on social media because people cannot visit other people at their homes to sensitize them so a lot of people do not really understand why these regulations are in place uh, there are so many uh, misinformation going around that this is political mm. borrow wants money ah, that's see. the reason why they are closing mass they are closing this so a lot of people are not convinced that they need to stay at home so whatever you do whatever regulation you put in place if people are not convinced if people do not understand why they need to do what they are asked to do then mm. that that is where the problem is mm. i think uh we need to really communicate differently as than we are currently doing mm. all right let's discuss the relief Packet part of it. We've seen individual people, groups, um, both abroad, both here and abroad, uh, doing their bits. We, 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 we've been told that the government is planning a massive uh, donation uh, pretty soon. But how did you see, how coordinated or uncoordinated, how effective do you think uh, these uh, individual and separate um, groups uh, who are going about giving it, how, how impressive do you think? I mean, uh I think Joe has mentioned that we have all become each other's keepers. Each other's keeper within uh, this. And I think That's one this good thing point, from this That talk. is very necessary because you don't know who would be suffering. You don't know whose business is suffering. Yeah. Uh, you don't know who would need the help. I normally do not have any problem with civil society doing this, raising funds and buying stuff and giving it to people. But I'm always skeptical about the motive for political parties, especially those in power. Uh, mm. Because it's an avenue that can easily be. Are you abused. talking now about uh, the UDP food bank, all the of GDC? Them, all of, it's a good thing. GDC Don't thing misunderstand me. It's mm. a good thing. It's a mm. good thing to give if you can for mm. for everybody. Mm. Uh, but now to narrow this uh, debate on the president giving, mm -hmm. I don't think it should be the president. It should giving. be government. It should be a govern. It should be the government through mm. the right channel. If ah. help is what is needed, mm. and it's not just something that you take and give to somebody. Mm. A proper assessment needs to be done. Mm. For example, and it is the disaster management. For example, that really need to assess which communities would require this. What sort of uh, materials do they require? Mm. At what given time would they need it? And based on that, then the government, not the president, the mm. government can make these provisions. But if the president is doing it, then it becomes political and if it is Wait. political then it's it's which we to, which we, we um, well we've been saying government is yet to act government is yet to act so we, we we know it today it, it, will soon but the act. government Maybe. is not acting it's as the we is acting. as we speak they are they're they're they putting something together but then if if the udp supporters or udp can take credit from davos initiative and say it's davos and udp i, I mean the, pre the, the government is headed by a politician, President Barrow. Yeah, I, he, naturally, he will take the credit that, okay, <laughs> it is Barrow who is giving this thing. Jawara used to do it, food aid. We say Jawara Mano, Jawara Kinto, Jawara Nyo. We cannot help. But it's, it's, it's different. Mm. UDP, UDP can mm. get can raise funds, yeah. get stuff, and give it to UDP party members. No, they, they said they wouldn't do that. They said it's not, not political. They said they wouldn't do it. But they cannot free my themselves point, from my that. My point is they can do that. Mm -hmm. They can right they cannot in fact no, my point is mm. they can if that if they wanted to do that okay so you would not expect the president for example 
to buy food stuff and give it to MPP, NPP he cannot people. do it if, especially if he's doing it on behalf of the government okay. because now the government is not for NPP it's for everybody exactly and that's where mm -hmm. the difference also is mm -hmm. and the difference here also is not just giving mm -hmm. it's you are responding to a crisis exactly if you're responding to a crisis you need to do an assessment of what the crisis is mm -hmm. who really is suffering who needs what is being given mm -hmm. and there are also channels that are supposed to do that impartially mm -hmm. without any order of politics okay let me, let me give you that a few point I'm trying to make. a few flashpoints mm -hmm. in this COVID uh, individual or group um, charity packages. Um, Layadawa came under criticism for associating his package with councils mm -hmm. and uh, as I fall of the TRRC had an encounter with um, APRC supporter who, um, who didn't want any food from him because uh, of his work. How did he react to all those things? No, that's not just Oh, area. that's not just area. That's my area. Okay. <laughs> yes, go uh, ahead. <laughs> I think those things are, they, they, these are things you would expect. Mm. Uh, Gambian politics since 2016 has, has become very interesting. Mm. There is nothing that is devoid from politics. Mm. Politics is involved everywhere. And, and this is the reason why uh, in situations like this, you have UDP, you have other political parties like uh, NDP taking yeah. advantage of the yeah. situation. Mm. Um, but for ASA Fall's case, ASA would always be APRC's number one enemy. <laughs> Although, if you ask me, I think it's uncalled for. Yeah. Uh, sure. Because ASA has always been on the front, uh, the forefront since the, the yeah. outbreak of, <laughs> and ASA is also representing uh, a civil society organization called National Food Drive. Exactly. And so many people would not understand this, but obviously if somebody wants to give you help and you don't want it, mm. what can you do about that? <laughs> and use politics. Yeah. And talking about food packages, I understand you also you also come across a, a I mean very close home an, is, an initiative for yeah. people of LRR initiated by the Mansa Congo Area Council. Mm -hmm. How do they call the program? It is called Mansa Congo Area Council COVID-19. COVID-19. So how this came about was yeah. that uh, we understand that a lot of people are coming out to advocate on behalf of people who might be needing help. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the help that have been given were centralized around the combos mm -hmm. because maybe that's most accessible. Exactly. Uh, but accessible, but also because uh, help may not necessarily be as much as you would need mm -hmm. to decentralize it as you would want. Mm -hmm. And so that is the reason why when I was in Kiang and I've interacted with people and I I've, I always go to Kiang so I know that it's a very poor community. Mm -hmm. and I hey, you see, but the are listening. But the yeah. is poorer. Kiang is poor, <laughs> okay, but okay. is poorer. Yeah, okay. uh, but I, I realized that other people are doing their part. They're helping those that they can help. Mm -hmm. They will want to extend the help, but they may not necessarily have the means to do so. Mm -hmm. So those of us who are also from here, I think if you are going to give charity, make sure you give it closer to home, too, <laughs> right? Not uh, that you're not the coward type. Yeah. So if any if anyone can help, if all of us are involved in this, whoever is closer to us will get help from us. Okay. So that, uh, that that way it becomes decentralized. Mm -hmm. So I I talked to somebody from the council, but mm -hmm. apparently the council have also been initiating. So so far, like how this. much money has been raised? Um, so that's that's where we need to say, have, yes, yes. But I haven't finished what is happening here. So the council has been initiating this, but they don't want it. They don't want it to become political. Okay. Uh, because the council representative, the chairman especially, comes from UDP, UDP and yes. they don't want it to be a UDP ah, initiative. So they wanted a Kiang initiative. So yeah. So they identify members from Jara and Kiang, Kiang. both within the Gambia and abroad, to constitute a committee. Yeah. And the committee is where I became a co-chair with K. Balang, whom I'm going to we call now. We expect you to have on the line. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to give us who is, it has become a competition between Jara and Kiang, who is <laughs> giving more money. Uh, so far, Kiang is doing better. I have not had a similar program in, in NBD, the body boost. Have you had but it won't, no, they yeah. can go hungry, nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, so Keba Lang is the other co chair. Keba, you're joining us on the show live. I've just been explained, so I'll hand you over to Lanin Chan. Okay, Keba, can you hear us loud and clear? Very quickly, tell us about this initiative taken by citizens of LRR. And so far, how much have you done and what are the next steps? Well, actually, um, this is an initiative from the 
chairperson of the area council who is landing Sane. And as Nima was explaining, the whole purpose was to mobilize resources mainly from people who are from El Arab and then to have some kind of a centralized approach whereby we can help our people. So we know that there's so many villages, so many individuals who are going to their own communities and then giving them support. Mm. But if you give support in that way, there'll be communities or families who have no one to help them and they'll be left out. Absolutely. So the approach here is to have some some kind of a coordinated approach whereby we have a centralized put whoever wants to donate you put your money in there or you put your resources in there and then from there we can go on to target the most vulnerable families uh, in LRR to be able to give them the support that they need. Yeah. And this is where the whole initiative came up from uh, with regards to the chairman as the president tax force uh, that mainly comprise people from Jara and Kiam because Jara and Kiam constitute LRR. LRR. Mm-hmm. When you look around and the things that you see, it doesn't look like it's the poorest, but actually, <laughs> from the statistics and the data, it's saying that LRR is the poorest, we are the smallest as well. No, I, d- I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can speak louder. Speak louder as well. Let's hear that again. Eight eight hundred and eight hundred and twenty-four thousand. Wow. Three hundred and forty-three. That's quite a lot of money. And, and, and that is excluding the one thousand three hundred and thirty-five, three hundred and fifty that we have in the GoFundMe. Wow. So I'm not, I'm not adding that in there. So we, we're very much close to raising a million dollars. And this is mainly from organizations and individuals from LRR. Good. Okay, now, so The poorest, like you said. <laughs> but, but we know that when we come together, we can do great things. Um, now, the approach is, for ah, example, yes, the our responsibility mm-hmm. is to mobilize resources. Okay. Now, we will work with the council to identify uh, the most vulnerable households in the region to be able to support them. As mm-hmm. we know, with many things going there, there is no data to say this family is poorer than that family. Mm. That data is not there. Yeah. So we will have to walk through the recognized local government structures like the Board Development Committee, the VDCs, who are very much in touch with the families in their communities to be able to identify yeah. who are the poorest and then be able to channel the support through those individuals. But the council is taking the lead in this and, and it's non political, let me put that very clearly. Yeah. Absolutely zero politics. And then the idea is, in fact, to extended beyond this period so after the COVID-19 as in mm. most developed countries mm. they have food banks okay. I mean you're talking about the most developed countries in the world they have food banks whereby they support the vulnerable so we want to make this some kind of the institution in Alara mm-hmm. even after the COVID-19 so the fundraising drive will carry on but mm. then a more permanent structure will be put in place by the council which will be very much known political to make sure that at least this work is continuous even after the COVID-19. How, uh, how, how soon do you expect, uh, you guys expect distribution to start? If somebody is listening in Canada, they want to know when the rice will, will be there soon or is it going to be oil or whatever. How soon do you think um, the distribution will start? We haven't decided on the, on the actual date, but hopefully sometime next week, because the council as well, to their credit, mm-hmm. have also provided they just provided the initial funding. So currently, from what I understand, they have over 300 bags of rice okay. in store, which could be used. So from next week, we can kick start it. These are monies, the monies that I've talked about are not mainly pledges. These are monies that are actually there. Uh, in uh, hand. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the monies that are already available. So we're not talking about pledges here. So mm-hmm. um, by next week, the, the distribution can start. But one thing that is important as well for us to note mm-hmm. is that not, most, not every family will need rice. Mm. There are families that have rice, but they don't have fish money. I mean, we don't we don't eat only rice. Wow, okay. You have to eat rice with something. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You, you want to go, you need oil, you need ground paste, you need, you need the parts anyway. Absolutely. To be able to put something on top of that rice. So, the support that we try will be given is not just going to be rice. Every mm-hmm. household, you can't give them rice. And at the end of the day, they don't have anything to put on top of that rice. I mean, you're not still helping the situation. So, you, it has to be a proper need assessment whereby families will be given what they need. Mm-hmm. If I have rice, you don't need to give me rice, rice give again. Me some money. Give, give me money that I can use to go and buy certain things that I need. Ah, okay. Thank God this is not very good. They will, they will go for money. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Everybody who makes a is That's great so. itself. Yeah. Exactly. Together as well to see what can we do for our region because I mean you look at for the network, it, it, the Propero is from Kia. Ah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, and then you look at so many other media platforms mm-hmm. they're owned by Kiankis or Jaren Kis. Wow, wow, wow. And then we're very prominent in certain areas. I just wanted to say stand, standards editor is from Kia as well. So <laughs> he just said that. <laughs> so so we, we cannot entirely sit back and then say, okay, uh, we're going to wait for the government to come. No, yeah. I mean, through our own initiatives, I mean, when we know each other, I haven't known Nima before. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Fantastic, Keba. Thank you very much for joining us live from the UK. Where about are you on the lockout, lockdown? lockdown you know, yeah. We've been in lockdown now. I think we're in fifth week now. Ah. Uh, so everybody is home. I'm lucky the kids are still sleeping because they refuse to go to bed early. <laughs> Marvelous talking to you. Thank you very much for that uh, Stalin contribution. There you have it. Um, a very good Kiang and Jara initiative. LRR Joe, are you impressed? Very, very much impressed. Oh, there very we go. Uh, so we will take the body. I, I hope, you know, I hope maybe like um, other regions can take you from this. Yeah. Yeah, so that at least as, 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 as they rightly said, I mean, to. Uh, not to politicize you exactly know, not to make it a very non-political activity Activate. so at least people can come together the councils you know and the governor's offices can work together and the mm-hmm. mayor's offices can work together and then make sure that this thing as i said i mean the covid is a disease but i think it has it, 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 really, has, really, it has really you know brought us together yeah and then it has really made us you know to be much more Exactly. Caring, you know, to the other person, yeah, and give us lessons yeah. that can continue beyond, beyond COVID. Yeah, to beyond, be because definitely, like sometimes, you know, like uh, Lamin is, is it's funny. Sometimes you can even stay, you can you can stay in your house, mm-hmm. and then maybe you don't even know, you know, the conditions of your next yeah, door neighbor. Next door neighbor. You see, so these are some of the things. See, these are some of the lessons that we learn. We learn from that. Yeah. Good. We will stay with Joe. Nima, when the time comes for distribution, you let me know. Okay. Right. The time comes for what? For, for contribution and for distribution. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, your contribution is coming today. <laughs> All right. Now, let's turn to Joe now. That's the other um, segment of the program. Joe is the communications director of training and communication at the IEC. Now, there is a lot of unfinished business at the IEC. 
you know which had to stop because of the covid 19 mm-hmm. among them of course is a show by elections in kerjarga and nyamina west kerjarga ward and nyamina west constituency uh, nbd and sierra respectively but there is a tussle in the el arada in west coast a legal tussle if you don't and we would like your inputs in that there the united democratic party have expelled the sitting chairman and according to our understanding or the understanding of uh, people about the local government act that supposedly means that he automatically loses his job but uh for sonko for that is the holder of that uh, post is still staying put the udp said the iec should act by calling for by-elections and the iec said they need formal notification from the council or oversight bodies that is yet to come so everything is politicized there but let's let's go and give us an update um about um, political parties we know last time you were here you said three or two were very much close to registration how are they now yeah they're still they're still close some and in fact we, are they too waiting for covid or no no, no we, we you know like uh, you can register even when yeah, there is you covid can register, but like um, you cannot even if you register you cannot just you know people are thinking of some mm-hmm. Other things, other than election. other than registration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have registration things we have been talking time. about. Yes. Yeah. So these are so we all, you know, we all, we all have a, a common cause, mm-hmm. and that is uh, for this uh, minutes or pandemic, you know, to, to, to move out. Exactly. But definitely, uh, we will let out the cat out of the bag when when the time comes. Oh, but they are because very. Definitely, we are working, and then we are we are working. We we, we uh, I think one or two are almost done. So, so we just with the papers of the third one, mm-hmm. you know, trying to because like uh, you know there are certain things that you need to look at. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like you have to look at the internal structures of the party. Yes. And things like that. So basically, many we people are worried that whether those that's this avalanche of you know parties have even met the criteria. They they, yeah, even, yeah, yeah, they, they often yeah, ask. They have. They have because the thing is they, they they have because if they don't you know we wouldn't have you mm-hmm. know. Yes. Um, registered them yeah okay so that's that and then you know like uh, we had what we had a receipt and then we finished uh, yeah. uh, and it's almost adopted our strategy plan 2020 2024 oh, yeah we've done all the thing, okay. all those things as i said as i said you know we work remotely yeah. and uh, with the advent of technology we're able to do a lot of things okay and of course uh, we had already planned you know for the registration mm-hmm. uh, in fact uh, before the this uh, outbreak we had already submitted the budget to government and all those things. Is yeah. there general registration? Yeah, or general registration general. And, 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 and the referendum. So we, we, were, we, were, we were definitely, you know... Supposing, uh, Joe, this pandemic really eats a, l- a good chunk of 2020, would registration still be possible? Yes, those are, you know, we're working. That's why, like, we, 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 we're looking at different scenarios. Mm-hmm. We're looking at different scenarios because actually what happened was like like general registration general registration should i mean should take place next mm. year 2021 yes yeah, but there should be a, a, a supplementary mm-hmm. before the general but if you but have l- a supplementary listen, listen, if you're gonna have l- a general listen, why do you need why, a no that is why mm. we thought it wise instead of wasting resources yeah, exactly we do the general now mm-hmm. because in the new constitution there is what there is room for continuous registration. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you would have captured, captured everybody, everybody before the, 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 the next elections. elections yeah. yeah. So that's the and then because of the threshold mm-hmm. of the the, 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 the referendum, mm-hmm. at least fifty percent should vote. Okay. That one is a matter of that's a must. Yeah, but we see with the with like the last uh, the last the supplementary was in two thousand sixteen. Mm-hmm. We know, you know, like with this issue of transfers mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people usually don't go back, you know, to mm-hmm. where to vote where they register. Yeah, yeah. So that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And the other problem is, you know, the issue of migration. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of these youths and people have migrated okay. from 2011 to now, exactly. and then there is no deletion also. Mm-hmm. So you know, from 2011 to 2020, a lot of people must have passed away. Exactly. That yeah. So that's why we said, looking at the the implications, we said that was why we said we wanted to do the general registration right. mm-hmm. because we didn't want to take the risk of using the old register. I see. So, so the possibility for us not to meet the the the, the threshold mm-hmm. will be high. So fifty yeah. percent is is a bit high. Okay. So that's 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 why we said there yeah, must be a yeah. registration. Yeah, but whatever the case is, you know, we're walking around, mm-hmm. you know, walking around and then looking at 
even in the midst of some of these things, you know, certain things, certain electoral activities, mm -hmm. you know, like certain countries are. Ah, yes, yeah, some are. And then, like uh, last week, you know, our chairpersons, mm -hmm. like the uh, electoral chairpersons of yeah. the electoral commissions in West Africa, yeah. they, like, they had a conference. <laughs> a, a video, video conference. conference. Yes, yeah, so they had a video conference. So they were looking at, because it's not only us, because like March. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's an election year. Uh, even in this year, Ghana. Yeah. Ghana you know, will come back, yes. So these are, you know, like we're trying to, and then some. Like Gambia and the Gambia. others have you know, next, year. next year. So we're trying to look at ways and means, alternatives. Mm -hmm. You see, now, okay, with this advent of technology and all those things. So, what, you know, what measures, mm -hmm. you know, to, to take? Mm -hmm. Because, like, there's, uh, you know, like, we're working, as I said, like IFS and others, mm -hmm. there's a weekly bulletin of yeah. the updates and all those things on elections. So, mm -hmm. we, we, we really walking you know walking through to see you know what 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 really what really, what okay. really is feasible that's the program let goes to the ones on the table kerjarga the word in the nbd and yamina West, of course still cannot happen yes uh, so there's no word no updates just uh, we have to listen to yeah we have government to, you know your, election is a human activity it's a human activity so unfortunately unfortunately you know like you know you you, you draw lessons yeah you draw lessons yeah. it's unfortunate um, I wish to take this opportunity to I mean, send my condolences to the people of Guinea. Yeah. Because you remember election that, chief that died. Elections yeah. and then the, the chairperson died. You know. Of COVID, yes. perhaps yes. more yes. importantly. Yes. So these are some of the things that we also have to look at. We learn lessons. Yeah. We learn lessons. So you don't just want to do things because you want to do want things. To do things. We know elections are time bound. Yeah. You, know, you have like laws, you know. Laws are there. But mm. of course, mm. if you don't have people to, 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 to vote for you. Uh, yeah. If, yes, if, if, if it's forced and then the people are infected and all and then so what is going to happen? And that seems to have been the case in Guinea. Yeah, so that's the problem. So, we, you know, like, as I said, like, uh, the electoral chairpersons, they do conferences and we also, mm -hmm. uh, technicians, you know, we do uh, exchange news. Okay. So we, la we, we, we learn lessons, you know, from other electoral right. countries and other electric, uh, countries. Finally, and yes. more importantly, uh, why can't the IEC call elections in the West Coast region where... Mm -hmm. According to many people's understanding, the job of chairman is vacant by virtue of the fact that he's been expelled f by the UDP and the, the acts provided that once you stop being a member of the party under whose ticket you were elected, you leave automatically. Oh, is this a misunderstanding? Or, yeah, as the IEC have <laughs> said, you must be notified by the council. Yeah, let, let, let me just give you an example. Can you tell us? Let me just give you an example. Yes. You see, for instance, like... Uh, you leave it open mm -hmm. like any any party that has problems with their party and they expel mm -hmm. you don't need you know you don't need any you know like parties should not you know like even like government you mm -hmm. know i'm just giving an example mm -hmm. that's the immunity we have mm -hmm. section 43 mm -hmm. if you look at it uh, 44 40, uh, that the IEC is not under the control of, of the anybody, state anybody okay anybody okay so you see when national assembly when there's a vacancy is the clerk even though everybody knows that that is what happens mm -hmm. it's a clerk that it's notifies it's the clerk that so it is not our money our mandate stops where we wh when we conduct elections and we write to the authority i see national assembly we write to the speaker and say look okay. Right, right, the the clerk, look, clerk. These are the people who are nominated, who, who are elected. Yes. So that's where our that's our, where our, right. our job ends. With this, we write to the local government you ministry. You wrote to the local government. We ministry. write to the local government minister after elections. Like these are the people that have been elected. Okay. Okay. That's where. So that's right. If there is a vacancy. If there is a vacancy, listen. That's why we say it's, it's we listen to the competent authority. Okay. And in this with case, Kerjaga, look with Kerjaga, what happened? Is, yeah. Is the chairman who wrote to us because oh, yes. he's a councillor. Yes. So the chairman wrote to us that this man has resigned. Yes. You can even ask. Yeah. GDC had a tussle with us. Exactly. They came they said over, 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 over the office. We said, yeah. no, it is not our responsibility to declare that position was vacant. vacant. So it has to come from the authority. The competent authority, mm -hmm. let them declare it. I see. So if the CEO cannot do it, but yeah. we know that the local, all the local councils are under the ministry of local government. Yeah. So it is not our. We cannot just go and pull. I mean, pull city for by by. Uh, no, they, we, they don't, we don't listen. You see, we don't have to 
teach people yeah. their, their response or to tell people their responsibility. Exactly. Everybody knows what is there. Okay. I know they're quoting section 23. You know, in fact, there is a difference between a by-election for national assembly and a by-election for local government. Okay. The, the time period. 60 and 90 days. Yes, 60 and 90 days. People okay. should have. This yeah. is within 60 days. This is within section 60 days. Okay. So but then. from the elections administration 90 days. Okay. But now. So section 60. So listen, mm. I know. If you write to, if you expel somebody and you write to us, mm. you are informing us. Mm. Yes, you've informed us. Yeah. But we don't have the powers to go and get that person out. Yeah. So if the person is under an authority. Yeah. So that authority should say, look, because of, by virtue of this law, this mm. one, this, this, this one, this, uh, this, uh, how to call it, this seat is vacant. Mm. Then you call up. That's Rex. what happened with the... Uh, with, with National Assembly, you, with... Let me give you a, a, a bad, little background. Mm. You know, in 2015, why this, why this amendment came? Mm. Because that, the then council of Buyangwa yes. was expelled. Yes. And then there was a call for by-election, and then it was what? It, mm. was, it, it was literally realized that yeah. you cannot, you do, cannot that. do that. So that was why in 2015, this... They amended. Yes. Section 19 is amended. So that the parties can expel them. Yeah, so, that, so that's it. So now, but where... That's, 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 that's where the, the IEC... And then when it came, yeah. we were written to, and then we did that. So okay. can tell we are written to. Yeah. So but where the IEC... Is, okay, let me tell you, where the authorities, the local government authorities in this case, yeah. refuse to do it for political reasons, as many people are seeing it, because obviously the chairman is the head of the council. He would not write to the IEC to call by elections for his position. He could have done it if he's, if he's really sincere or he's not politically inclined to stay in power. But the oversight, the minister for local government, the permanent secretary, can do it, and they are not doing it, and obviously for political reasons. Isn't the IEC empowered then to act? You have no power. What can you do? No. I no power. You see, you see, you see. I don't want to. I, go, I don't want to go into politics yeah. because people want know, to understand the where the power is. The law is here. Yeah, people, should, I, people should try to learn, you know, process. Yeah. Because a lot of things happen. Yeah. People went to court, and then these ones became law. Yeah. You, know, you understand what I mean? I understand. So we cannot just, we cannot, you see, people should so, understand our situation. Yeah. So the because IC... Because we implement law, we yeah. don't make laws. Exactly. And then like, we don't enforce, we you, are not... We are not enforcers. Yeah. Yeah. You are you only... So look at the constitution. To you know organize exactly, elections. You know exactly what to do. Okay. So I am not here to... Yes. I, don't so I understand to, I don't want to talk much. No, we are talking about the IEC's yeah, I don't want to limitation of boundaries. Yeah. No. Yeah. We are, we are, the, we are, the whole are objective. By law, the whole so objective. I don't want to go beyond that. Exactly. So if people are not doing their job... I don't, I the whole, the we know, the whole objective yes. is to let the Gambian people know what, where the, the, what the role of the... Where their limits are. That's what we, That's why I'm asking yeah, this yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. It's very clear now. You're not accusing you. Don't it's worry. very clear yeah. now that, that as it happened in local government or in any election, it is if it is a national assembly, it's the clerk you know you know informs the IEC mm -hmm. that seat Nangam is vacant. This also it should be the council or the local government. They are not doing it, and it's not your job. You have to wait until it's properly done. Yeah, we know that. That's, that Nima, what do you think about this? Um, okay, that's where I want to go. I think what Joe explained makes re, uh, so real sense. sense. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, the sense that IEC responds to vacancies, they do not declare. They don't declare they vacancies. Don't they they respond. And in this case, they respond and hold elections, exactly. but they don't declare them vacant. Yeah. An authority is supposed to declare and after, yes. a vacancy. Yeah. I think what I, I saw the, the letter coming from the, the chairman from the Kama yeah. the council, and yes. I think I think perhaps he understands that UDP can remove him. Hmm. I think he wanted a long road to it. A long road, to exactly. It. Yeah. The long road. He went to telling the legality of his expulsion. The long road would be that UDP will now be compelled to take the matter. To Court, to and court, that take several, several ways, several and he can stay in power until. To do so. <laughs> now, the only other channel to do this, if the authorities refuse to do what they are mandated to do, is to take it to, to Supreme Court. Matter to court, which the UDP are threatening to do. Exactly. So okay. The objective was, of course, to know uh, that the IEC, like you see, see so um, clearly made, mm -hmm. can only fill vacancies, um, elective vacancies, but they cannot declare them vacant. They have to have authority. Mm -hmm. So in this case, that has to be the council, which is of course the chairman, mm -hmm. headed by the chairman, yeah. maybe okay. vice, cha maybe okay. vice chairman or whatever can do it, but they are not doing. And the local government ministry who can do it mm -hmm. is not doing it, Purport supposedly because of political reasons. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Th that will do. Unless we have a fresh <laughs> update from you. <laughs> no, um, as I said, like uh, we 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 working remotely. Okay. We, yeah. we work in the office and we work remotely, and we are looking at scenarios yes and of course like um we have of course this uh, we have this 
the, 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 the constitution, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the draft is already, the final draft is in. Yeah. So, you know, like, um, we, you know, we have a lot of issues, you know, we're Absolutely. looking at a lot of issues. Because as I said, maybe immediately after the COVID, we may have 17 political parties. Political parties. I'm like just giving an example. Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, you know, we at the IEC, we have, we're thinking of other issues. A lot of issues. You know, like the prominent among what we're looking at, mm -hmm. you know, is uh, the elections, you know, like we, we had, uh, we had 